Anticipatory guidance is something that's done in a lot of well child visits. We're looking at that child's development and anticipating the things that may come up next and some teaching is done to the, for the parents. So um, one of the things we talk about with infants is play. Play is essential to socialization. They don't need fancy expensive toys, but they need the opportunity to explore their world. Remember that um, infants are in the sensory motor stage of development, so they learn by experiencing the world through their senses. Um, it's a critical for their intellectual development that they have a lot of sensory experiences or opportunities. It is important for socialization. That's how they learn to interact with other people. It helps them develop creativity. It helps them become aware of themselves. Uh, play has therapeutic value in infancy. Um, it can help decrease stress. Appropriate toys for kids always think safety first. That's a clue. That's a, a big, massive clue. When you're looking at toys for children, think of the developmental ages, age of the child, what's typical for a child of that age, and would this toy be safe? The next thing is, is it developmentally appropriate? Does it... Um, can, the, can a child of that age or that developmental stage operate the toy? Is it something that a child that age can do? Does the toy reinforce developmental tasks for that uh, developmental level? So when you're thinking about, think about some baby toys uh, like blocks. If blocks are large enough, they can't uh, go into the airway. That makes them safe, right? We wanna think about the paint that's on them. Uh, we want to think about the material they're made of. Are they going to cause uh, some injury? And then we want to think about what do they do developmentally for a child? Well, a young infant may practice grabbing things and letting go and banging them together. And as they get a little bit older, they may practice manipulating that and trying to build things. Um, as they get even older, that promotes creativity. So think about there are some so there are some toys that can span a really wide developmental um, range. Some toys are more specific. When we have kids who are learning to walk, there are lots of push toys um, that they can push or pull on the floor uh, that encourage walking. So think about whether it's reinforcing developmental task. Um, can a child with at that age development operate the toy? And most of all, is it safe? We also um, should generally be talking to parents about temperament. Um, sometimes people who have no children or some people have one child believe that kids are like a blank slate and all of their actions, all of their personality traits are in response to how they are parented. And parenting is important, but anyone who has more than one child has learned that kids are born uh, with personality traits. Um, some kids are very gregarious and outgoing and they want to want to see all the people. Some kids really like to stick to their people and they're not real happy going to others and they don't want to go see other things because it uh, makes them anxious. And that those are not things that can be changed. Those are not things that are um, are parenting related, those are who that child is. So when we talk about the nature versus nurture debate, um, na nature really is a factor in personality traits um, and in temperament. If a child is easygoing, if they are maybe a more high strung child that is easily stressed, um, if they are more sensory seeking, they want lots of sensory input, or if they get overstimulated easily and need limited input. And that's really born. The nature part is how we teach children um, to interact in the world as themselves. So we want to help parents understand that kids are born with personality traits. Um, also, we need to look at whether those traits mesh well with the parents. Um, parents who are very, very outgoing may get really stressed out by their, or be really 
think something is wrong if they have a baby who is more slow to warm up and um, wants to take things more slowly socially. On the other side of that, parents who are quieter and not extremely social may not know what to do with this kid that wants to go away with every person they meet because everyone's a friend. And so help parents understand um, that their way of being is okay, but so is the child's. Um, we also need to look at whether parents have appropriate expectations uh, for infants temperament and developmental stage. Do they know what's expected for a child at this developmental level and do they understand their child's temperament? Um, separation anxiety and stranger fear is a normal developmental response to the realization that the primary caregiver is a separate human, separate person. Um, it is a sign of healthy attachment. Frequently, parents whose kids are going through separation anxiety uh, feel embarrassed, they may be criticized, they may apologize for that baby because they, um, we've kind of been socialized to think of that as negative behavior. It is a normal stage of development, okay? Um, parents may also feel guilty if they have to leave a child. Uh, most of us don't have an option. A lot of people are working. Um, so what can be done to uh, decrease that separation anxiety and to make it easier for the child and the, the adults involved? Um, we want to try to give that infant the opportunity to safely experience strangers. And safely usually means having their person around. So we want to have other people around while their safe person is still with them and maybe have short times where the other person is holding them and talking to them. Um, we want to allow them time to warm up to new people. We recommend that parents don't sneak out. We want them to say goodbye, let the child that they know that they're leaving when they have to leave. Um, so daycare, church nursing, whatever, because the child may be upset then, but if the parents sneak out, that child realizes later on, oh wait, where's daddy or where's mommy? And they're, they can't find them at all. That tends to be more frightening. We can allow, if there has to be separation, we can allow the child to hear the parent's voice on the phone um, and we can allow and encourage some transitional objects. One thing that's commonly done is people want to try to not, they want to um, try to keep the, the baby distracted and not let them, um, they think that the baby won't think about the, the person who's missing when they're gone and that may actually increase um, them actually increase anxiety. What makes it easier for the adults is not always easier for the child. Um, in the next section, we're gonna talk about childcare, discipline, and some other issues.